Okay, so I'm going to give a quick talk on uh, key techniques for frozen section. So usually less is more when you're doing a frozen section on a central nervous system tumor. Um, you, when you get the specimen, uh, it's important to evaluate what kind of tissue you actually are getting. Is it um, firm tissue? Is it soft brain tissue? Uh, and ideally, what I like to do is if it's uh, tissue that is heterogeneous as far as um, its discoloration, if there's white matter and cortex, I'll take pinhead sized pieces of the tissue from various regions, put them at the, on the end of the slide as shown here, make a smear, and what you can see is uh, the top image uh, is a relatively normal smear. Uh, I don't, can't get the mouse, oh there, okay, so this one's relatively normal. Uh, it is from a surgical case that was found, I mean, I'll show um, close-up images of uh, the histology, but this is, usually if you have relatively normal brain parenchyma and you do a smear, the tissue smears across the slide in a fairly uniform manner with not a lot of clumpiness. Uh, and so the two slides below are clumpier, uh, and it's usually an indication that it's either densely cellular uh, and forming clumps. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a metastasis, but it, it, they, even a, in a high-grade glioma, you get more clumping. Uh, it can be associated with um, uh, increased vessels uh, or vascular hyperplasia, uh, then it's gonna make the tissue a little bit tougher and it will smear in a more irregular manner. Okay, so <clears throat> the things uh, that differentiate between a smear and a frozen, I typically try to do both as long as I've got enough tissue. Uh, the smear ends up giving you a better histology uh, better cytology to evaluate the cytoplasmic border of the cells. Smooth cytoplasmic borders tend to end up going along with lymphoma and metastasis, whereas fibrillary cytoplasmic borders is what you usually expect to see with, a menin with either a meningioma or with a glioma. Gliomas tend to end up having thick, ropey fibrillary processes, whereas uh, meningiomas tend to have more of a fibrillary skirt-like appearance. Um, with a smear, you get better nuclear detail. Uh, you, you also, uh, I usually like to do H&E, that's what I'm used to looking at. I don't like doing diff quicks, even if, I, even if I'm told that they think it might be a lymphoma, I prefer doing an H&E, that's what I'm used to. Um, the diff quick doesn't really add anything. Diff quicks are better for looking at the nuclear morphology for lymphoid cells, so if you don't have a lymphoma, it's not a good thing. Um, so I usually just concentrate on H&E, but if you do an H&E, you have to get it into the alcohol immediately. I have the alcohol container sitting right next to where I'm doing the smear. I do the smear and immediately put it into the alcohol. You get good fixation, you don't get drying artifacts. One of the problems with a smear is that you can get drying artifacts if you don't rapidly fix it. Um, other problems with smears is that you can't assess cellularity very well. Thick sections of the smear are gonna look very cellular, thin sections or thin areas of the smear are gonna look uh, like there's not a lot of cells. So, and reading through really big clumps of tissue can be problematic, especially if the tissue doesn't really smear, if it's just a clump of, of tissue stuck to the slide. Usually if that happens, I try to look at the edges of that mass of tissue, and you can usually get some cytologic, cytologic detail from that tissue. Okay, so, Frozen sections, on the other hand, typically are a little bit better for assessing cellularity and architecture of the tissue. Um, and pattern of infiltration. Uh, are the cells predominantly in a paravascular arrangement or is it a diffuse infiltration or both? Uh, frozen artifacts, however, present a problem. Uh, if the tissue is not frozen quickly, uh, then you get a lot of nuclear distortion and you get clefting of the brain parenchyma, which makes it difficult to read. Uh, if you uh, have a mechanism to freeze the tissue with very little OCT on a cold metal plate, some of the uh, cryostats allow you to uh, use just a little bit of OCT, put it onto uh, the metal, freezes it very rapidly, get it cold, and then you add additional OCT to um, 
make it into a block for cutting. Uh, otherwise, I usually freeze the uh, OCT solid, then put the tissue directly on the, OC on the frozen OCT and put a little bit more OCT on top of that. So it depends on the cryostat that you're working with, but the ideal situation is to freeze it rapidly, get it cold, bef and not to have too much OCT uh, to, to freeze it with, because then you're going to introduce a freezing artifact. Cautions. Um, Overcalling fibrillary brain is necrosis. I've seen uh, general pathologists do that. Um, there's always a fibrillary background on the smears, and so you've got to be careful about calling something necrotic. I only call something necrotic when I really see uh, pycnotic uh, nuclear uh, changes with hyper eosinophilic cytoplasm or ghost nuclei, where you can be absolutely certain that it's necrotic. Otherwise, I, I tr tend not to mention it. Um, misinterpreting granular uh, cells from the cerebellum. If you know it's a cerebellum and you've smeared it, be careful, don't call it a lymphoma. Uh, I've seen that uh, mistake being made. Um, overcalling uh, glial, atypical glial cells in a smear. If you have only f a few cells in the smear that are somewhat slightly atypical with convolutions, uh, then you can uh, be cautious. Uh, is, the, is the surgeon in the right area? You know, you have a conversation with the surgeon. Uh, are they sure that they're in the lesion? Um, and the other question is, um, if they're sure they're in the lesion, uh, don't say it's um, pathologic, uh, because it's always going to be pathologic. If you're receiving a brain tissue for a smear, there's always some kind of pathology, usually gliosis. So uh, if you say gliosis, if you say that, that there's a typical brain parenchyma, that's not necessarily helpful to the surgeon. The surgeon needs to know, does he have diagnostic tissue? Um, so if you can't say that it's diagnostic tissue, you can always say uh, reactive versus low grade. Uh, and that's usually a little bit better um, because you're not setting yourself up. Uh, if the surgeon has given you only the gliotic edge adjacent to a high-grade glioma and you don't have that correlate high-grade area, you have not done your job. You need to end up making sure that the clinical correlates with what you're seeing on the slide. So if they're telling you it's a high-grade lesion and you're only seeing slight atypia and not many cells that are atypical, then they may have to do a, a deeper uh, biopsy. Uh, CNS lymphomas, I don't, do cy I don't do flow cytometry with them. Typically, they're um, large B cell lymphomas. They're fragile. They break. They don't, they don't uh, survive processing for the flow cytometry. You, it's better to end up saving that tissue to do H&E and immunohistochemical uh, staining. If you have very scant tissue, talk to the, to the surgeon. Uh, if they're going to give you more, then you can use it as a smear, use it as a frozen, or if you've got enough, uh, do both. If they're not going to give you anything more, if they're not going to do anything differently with the frozen, then tell them it's better to keep that tissue for permanent section so you don't get artifactual distortion of the tissue. Um, and that will save you because you're going to have the most tissue for doing immunohistochemical studies. Okay, so this is a, a, a frozen that was done, uh, and it shows uh, infiltrating metastatic tumor cells, but also the granular cell neurons uh, in the cerebellum. And on smear, these are the granular cell neurons. So be careful. You can have dense cellularity, uh, but they all look fairly bland, but this is normal tissue, and you've got to know where you are. These smears are from basically normal cortex. There are a few scattered uh, normal cortical neurons, uh, and the rest of the cells have very fine fibrillary processes. This is relatively normal tissue, not tumor. The most that you could say with something like this is um, uh, brain parenchyma reactive versus low grade. Uh, so let's go into some of the cases. This is a left frontal tumor that was uh, we were told was invading the dura. The, there's a, a 
clearly a tumor infiltrate here that uh, shows a fairly monomorphic population of tumor cells. And the tumor cells have fibrillary processes, but the fibrillary processes, as better shown here, have more of a skirt-like area. I like to go to areas of the smear where there's very few cells so that I can actually determine the cytoplasm of the individual cell as it relates to that individual cell, so the nucleus and its associated cytoplasm. I want to look at enough of those individual cells and their associated cytoplasm can, so that I can determine whether or not I think it's glial versus something else. So this has a skirt-like cytoplasmic um, fibrillary uh, process, and focally, it's forming whorls. So this is a meningioma uh, on frozen section, said men meningioma with frequent whorl formation. If they have whorls, it's great, but meningiomas don't always. Meningiomas can have very um, marked nuclear pleomorphism. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, an atypical meningioma, you can have angiomatous meningiomas, which can have very marked degenerative pleomorphism of the nuclei, and you can't overcall that. So I typically don't end up saying too much about nuclear pleomorphism unless it, the nuclei have irregular hyperchromatic uh, nuclei, uh, nuclear features as well, and not just the pleomorphism as far as size variability. This is the tumor. There is a dural tail. I like to look at the radiology before I do the smear, before I do the diagnosis, uh, call in the diagnosis for a frozen section. If you can't look at the smear, or sorry, if you can't look at the radiology before doing the interpretation of the frozen section, have a conversation with the surgeon, find out radiographically, is it enhancing, where is it? Those are very important items. Uh, knowing that it's dural-based instead of interparenchyma, uh, that'll help because fibrillary processes can be seen in meningiomas as well as gliomas. You don't want to call the wrong thing in the wrong site. Um, so this one was called an atypical meningioma because of mitotic figures. Now, um, if you see mitotic figure on a smear, obviously that's a potential high-grade feature. One mitotic figure on the smear is usually not a good thing. It usually indicates that there's a lot of mitotic figures in the tissue. Uh, so the next case is left frontal tumor. Uh, and these cells have certainly marked nuclear uh, size, extremely prominent uh, nucleoli, and their cytoplasmic borders are relatively smooth, and they're smearing at, predominantly as clumps of cells. Focally, there's uh, extensive necrosis. This is where I really do call it necrosis. There's pycnotic nuclei. Some of the nuclei are becoming ghost nuclei, uh, losing their nuclear membrane. So. In this case, I would say there's a necrosis. So this is a metastatic carcinoma based on frozen. That's what, I, that's what this was called on frozen, metastatic carcinoma. You can't tell what type, but you can at least say that it's metastatic carcinoma. There's the radiology. Again, I like to do the radiology in reverse, see the radiology before doing the, the frozen diagnosis, but um, it's nice to, to see it afterwards as well. Uh, so on diagnosis, this was a metastatic non-small cell lung carcinoma. So it was confirmed um, on permanent. The next case is a left brain tumor, 74-year-old man with multifocal intraaxial brain lesions. Multifocal always raises the possibility of lymphoma versus uh, multifocal gliomas. We, we tend to see a fair number of multifocal gliomas, but lymphoma always has to be at the top of your list. <clears throat> so here's the, one of the smears. It's a uh, atypical population, fairly cellular. Again, this is a smear, but it's still very cellular. And the nuclei look um, uh, atypical. Uh, this clearly is a neoplastic process. There are apoptotic cells. So here we're seeing uh, dead hypereosinophilic um, uh, cells, and so uh, there are individual cell, uh, there is individual cell necrosis. Uh, these are all the features of lymphoma. This is 60X, um, but you can see that uh, the cells have very scant cytoplasm, and if you can get to a, a few cells and see a smooth cytoplasmic border, that's helpful with calling it lymphoma. Um, lymphoma is the one situation where you want to end up being able to tell them it's lymphoma if you can because then they'll stop doing surgery. 
they can always give you a little bit more. Uh, typically, when they're going in for these cases, um, they do remove some amount of tissue uh, so that the brain, they don't have um, too much uh, swelling of the brain, and, and so you usually can get adequate tissue. But again, uh, the tissue should be used for permanent section and not for flow cytometry because these, these are just too fragile and they break. The frozen d doesn't always help. This is the frozen. It shows that it is a um, moderately cellular area of, of infiltrate, but it doesn't tell you much of anything about the cells. Uh, this is the freezing artifact that we typically get with brain tissue, uh, which is why I don't really like the, the uh, frozen as much as I like the smear. So on frozen, this was an atypical mononuclear cells with pycnotic debris, favor lymphoma. Um, you got to be careful because some high-grade gliomas can look similar. Uh, here's the radiology. And so this was a primary CNS large B cell lymphoma. Next case, seven, uh, a seven-year-old boy with a left-sided brain tumor. Uh, and I'm deliberately not showing the radiology so that you can kind of get an assessment of, this, of the cells without kind of getting a clue from the radiology. Um, so these cells do have fibrillary processes. The nuclei are relatively eccentrically located with an abundant amount of cytoplasm and thick uh, fibrillary processes. Uh, this is another image to show the same. I like going to areas, again, where there are not that many cells so that I can really get a good impression of the cytoplasmic border and whether it's a smooth or fibrillary uh, edge to the cytoplasm. So on frozen, this was called a glial neoplasm with gemistocytic giant cell astrocytic features. That's all you really have to say. Uh, and the radiology was interesting. Uh, these, the tumor is on the right. And on the left, you can see subcortical and cortical abnormalities um, all over the outer surface of the brain. So this was a patient with tuberous sclerosis. And the tumor was actually a subependymal giant cell astrocytoma. It's a nice case. Uh, the next case, left frontal tumor, 44-year-old with new onset seizures. And the uh, smear shows a uh, neoplastic infiltrate of um, monomorphic population of cells. Uh, the cells have very scant cytoplasm. The nuclei are relatively round uh, and fairly open chromatin. Uh, and the cell process, there are cell processes. Let's see if I can get the arrow. Um, so there's cell processes like here. So there are some fibrillary processes here. Uh, this is another area. There is some uh, pleomorphism to the um, nuclei. Uh, some of the nuclei are a little bit uh, larger than others. Uh, and there are mitotic figures. So automatically, this raises your concern that you might be dealing with a higher grade tumor. Frozen section, again, is not very helpful, except for the fact that it does tell you that it's a very cellular tumor. Uh, so on frozen, I call this a glial neoplasm with elegant endoglial features. You don't have to say that. You, all you have to say is that it's glial. Um, sometimes it kind of looks elegant endoglial because of round nuclei and open chromatin. And, you can be wrong, it can be astrocytic, and, and with molecular phenotype, um, with doing IDH and ATRX, you're going to end up being able to tell. You don't make the diagnosis of an oligo unless you have 1P19Q fish, so, um, you know, you don't have to go there, but I like to if I can <laughs> and, and see if I'm right. Um, and so I said this was concerning for high grade. Here's the, the uh, radiology. If you've got the radiology before you do the um, frozen, it's helpful because oligodendroglial tumors typically are more infiltrative into the cortex, and, uh, and then they're all, they can be in the white matter, but they really love cortex. Um, and so if you've got expansion of the cortex uh, by the tumor, that's a glue that you might be dealing with an oligodendroglioma. Uh, so this on diagnosis permanent section was an anaplastic oligodendroglioma, WHO grade 3, and Fish confirmed that it was 1P19Q co-deleted in 97% of the cells, but there was also polysomy of chromosome 1 and 19, which indicates that that has the potential for being a more aggressive tumor. Next case is a 29-year-old man with an enhancing left frontal brain tumor and previous evacuation of a hematoma. Uh, now, this tumor 
again, has fibrillary processes. You can see, uh, let's see if I can get this to work. There. So there, there, this cell, I think this cell, these fibr thick fibrillary processes look like it's associated with that cell. This one has thick fibrillary processes as well. You got to, you know, you got to drive around and, and really get a good feel for um, the cytoplasm of individual cells. So I go to more fields. Here's another field with some nuclei that clearly are hyperchromatic and, and very irregular, uh, and they do have thick, ropey fibrillary processes. Uh, there's clearly a lot of nuclear pleomorphism. Here's some more nice cells showing uh, clear fibrillary cytoplasm associated with the atypical neoplastic nuclei. And in this field, this is 20X, we have a thick uh, blood vessel where the um, uh, spindle nuclei of the blood vessel are fairly numerous. Uh, and so this is concerning for vascular uh, proliferation or endothelial, pro whatever you want to call atypical blood vessels for high-grade gliomas. Uh, if, if you call it endothelial proliferation, uh, vascular proliferation, this is atypical. This to me is atypical and at least on frozen, I don't necessarily, it's not definitive for vascular hyperplasia in the permanent section, but it's a clue that you might have it. Um, and so on frozen, if they think it's a high grade lesion and I see this, I'll say it and say that it's concerning for a high grade lesion. So this is a densely cellular, cellular neoplasm with features of vascular hyperplasia, favor glioma. Uh, I, I would actually say favor glioblastoma um, in this case. So this is the uh, imaging uh, and the diagnosis was, was, was a glioblastoma. Uh, it's IDH wild type, uh, it's WHO grade four. Uh, there was focal necrosis as well as vascular hyperplasia on permanent section. Uh, it was ATRX wild type, and the MGMT methylation was not detected. And that's it. Okay? I hope that helps for people that are doing smears and frozen sections. 